folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now I've done a lot of videos on mood and mood disorders and I've covered a lot of herbs. Um, I've talked about various uh, nutri nutritional strategies that can use to improve your mood. Um, but I haven't done a video on B vitamins and mood and so I thought I would um, try and cover this topic uh, in a single video. Um, it's a quite interesting topic. Um, many people associate B vitamins with uh, energy uh, and providing energy uh, and even if you look at the back of um, cereal packets you'll see that uh, usually they give um, the uh, B vitamins that they, they usually say that they are um, required for energy production and that's true. Um, but B vitamins also because they uh, are useful in energy production they help with energy production in the brain uh, and there may be um, uh, uses for B vitamins in terms of elevating mood. Now I've done a small slide uh, that provides a, a table with some information on it so if I bring that slide up uh, I just wanted to talk through some of the information on there so that uh, if it's something that you haven't considered say you've got a mood disorder say you're, uh, you're, you're feeling anxious you've got uh, mild depression uh, and you're looking to treat that and elevate your mood um, having a look at the amount of B vitamins in your diet uh, is something that perhaps you could do so if we have a look uh, at the table that I've uh, that I've constructed we can see um, there are a number of B vitamins that are required for um, brain function. Now, uh, B vitamins are um, required for energy production. They're required as cofactors in many energy producing um, reactions. And so they're uh, intimately involved with uh, processes, cellular processes like gly glycolysis, the citric acid cycle. Um, and they help um, all cells produce energy and give cells all uh, all cells normal metabolic regulation now obviously your brain has brain cells and and the cells that actually uh, provide and use neurotransmitters to um, change your thoughts and your uh, your you know your mood um, they're, they're, they're neurons and they, they work in the same way they have the same cellular requirement for um, cofactors B vitamins other vitamins phytochemicals in order to be able to work properly so it's no uh, it's no uh, surprise that B vitamins are required um, for producing energy in the brain uh, and therefore it's no surprise that if they provide energy to brain cells to neurons that um, this has an effect on mood um, now generally um, I don't really ever recommend taking B vitamins in isolation unless there is a specific problem uh, that you're trying to um, treat. Generally B vitamins work together, they work in cellular pathways, uh, many of them interact and so it's always a good idea uh, if you're going to take a supplement of B, vit B vitamins to take them as a as a complex uh, and most multivitamins will contain most of the B vitamins that you require. Some multivitamins are obviously better than others uh, but generally you will find folate or folic acid um, sometimes called vitamin B9, you'll find uh, cobalamin or a version of cobalamin, uh, which is vitamin B12. Um, uh, you'll find uh, thiamine, which is vitamin B1. Uh, and you'll find uh, pyridoxine, um, or a version of pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6. Now, these are some of the vitamins that have been evidenced to require uh, so some of the uh, uh, vitamins that are B vitamins that have been evidenced to be required for any pro energy production in the brain and there are studies that have looked at how these uh, vitamins are used I'm not saying that the other vitamins aren't used in energy production uh, in the brain or aren't used for uh, to elevate mood this is just um, some of the ones that have got some good evidence uh, supporting them uh, and uh, we can see their effects that they have on, on brain function so folic acid or folate um, is quite easy to get in the diet if you eat lo lots of green leafy vegetables you will have um, folic acid folate in your diet um, and you know taking supplements is a way of boosting uh, the amount of folate but you can you can get reasonable amounts of, um, uh, of folic acid uh, in your diet um, now folic acid is related to the production of tryptophan uh, and it can help increase the synthesis of um, serotonin because it decreases the metabolism 
of tryptophan. Tryptophan is converted into serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is a, a neurotransmitter that is associated with elevated mood. So if you can break, if you can uh, slow the breakdown of the tryptophan, more of it is likely to be converted into serotonin. Uh, and likewise, similar pathways occur um, in order to be able to increase levels of dopamine and noradrenaline. And dopamine and adrenaline are also associated um, imbalances in dopamine and noradrenaline are also associated with um, detrimental mood changes. Um, and as with all the other B vitamins, the folic acid also um, contributes to energy production in the brain. So really, uh, folate is a very um, important um uh, it's an important v vitamin uh, for brain function, for neurotransmitter um, metabolism, because it uh, it prevents the degradation of some of the important um, monoamine um, neurotransmitters. So we're talking about serotonin, dopamine and noradrenaline. Um, now, I'm not saying that higher levels of those uh, neuro uh, those neurotransmitters are beneficial. Um, some in some cases, there may be uh, mood uh, problems from having elevated levels uh, too high. What we're talking about is trying to maintain uh, the correct levels, the homeostatic level of the brain that requires a certain level of these neurotransmitters. Um, Although low levels are associated, or most commonly associated with mood, mood disorders, um, it's obviously more is not always better. Uh, what you want is the required amount. And certainly taking you know, vitamins and minerals, making sure you've got them in your diet is one way to, to help ensure that the brain can provide uh, what it needs in order for its own, you know, its, its own um, function. Um, vitamin B12, uh, everybody uh, is aware that vitamin B12 is used for energy production. A lot of people take vitamin B12 injections for that purpose. Um, and uh, unlike uh, folic acid, which prevents the degradation of the monoamine neurotransmitters, cobalamin, cobalamin uh, or vitamin B12, um, it, it increases the production of the of serotonin, uh, dopamine and noradrenaline. Um, there's also other functions of vitamin B12 in the brain. Um, for example, v vitamin B12 is needed for the synthesis of the cell membranes around neurons. And it's those cell membranes that are required for the connections between neurons and that um, any breakdown in that membrane or the function of that membrane would decrease the efficiency of neuronal communication. Um, and as well as uh, anybody who knows about um, homocysteine metabolism will know that um, folic acid and uh, vitamin B12 are both required uh, for each other's um, kind of metabolism within the body. There is a there is a mutual um, compatibility between the two um, vitamins um, such that um, high levels of one can detrimentally affect uh, the other vitamin so they're needed in balance um, and 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 certainly a deficiency in vitamin b12 can uh, can uh, can affect folate metabolism as well uh, and this is one of the reasons why b vitamins really should always be taken uh, as a complex um, rather than in isolated uh, you know in isolated uh, as, as isolated compounds um Acetylcholine um, is not so. Uh, ast uh, the main the main neurotransmitters are, uh, that that affect mood are serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline. Uh, but there is some evidence that acetylcholine may may affect mood. And one one line of evidence for this is uh, those people who have. Um, <laughs> you know, certain um, dementias that have uh, low levels of acetylcholine, they do get a certain type of depression along with that as well. Whether that is actually caused by the low levels of acetylcholine or whether that is a knock-on effect because of other effects within the brain, it's not quite clear, but acetylcholine does appear to have um, a, a certain effects on mood. It certainly has effects on cognition. Low levels of acetylcholine are associated with poor memory. They're associated with poor recall, um, poor verbal skills. So acetylcholine is certainly, uh, you know, required for memory, uh, but there is a link there to, um, to mood as well. And thiamine is required uh, for the synthesis of acetylcholine. So if you have a thiamine deficiency, one of the deficiency symptoms of thiamine is poor memory. And this relates to the fact that uh, your acetylcholine levels decrease when you have a thiamine deficiency. Um, and, uh, and, and, and this is obviously, um, you know, this is, uh, this is, again, relates to energy production and the production of, uh, you know, cellular metabolism within the brain that requires certain cofactors, one of them being um, vitamin B1. 
pyridoxine, vitamin B6, uh, again it aids in the synthesis of the monoamine neurotransmitters, so that's dopamine, serotonin and noradrenaline. Um, and you can have uh, reductions in brain levels of uh, certainly serotonin and also perhaps GABA uh, if you have a deficiency of vitamin uh, uh, B6. Um, so again, uh, uh, pyridoxin is, is required for monoamine uh, synthesis uh, and, and therefore you can see that um, you know again we're looking at another B vitamin another uh, a group of uh, the same group of monoamine neurotransmitters uh, and so you can see that B vitamins are required uh, really for those uh, you know they're in they're, they're intimately linked to those monoamine neurotransmitters that are related to mood disorders so the question is can you get all of the uh, B vitamins that you require uh, in your diet or do you need to take supplements? Well, that really depends how good your diet is and what you eat. Certainly, I would question whether you can get enough vitamin B12 if you are a vegan. Um, there is some uh, contention around that, but I've, I've, consist I've said consistently, I think, unless you're very conscious about trying to obtain vitamin B12, certainly vit uh, vegans are uh, will find it difficult to find vitamin B12 because vitamin B12 is associated with uh, animal foods. Um, I, I do believe that you can obtain enough vitamin B vitamins from your diet but you have to be very careful about what you eat certainly B vitamins are present in you know uh, healthy foods that a lot of people eat such as uh, meat nuts seeds um, so you can obtain um, and like I've said before folate is a uh, is, is rich source of folate is green leafy vegetables so if you're conscientious you eat a high quality diet you perhaps don't need to supplement with B vitamins um, Having said that, there is and there has been shown to be advantages to supplementing with B vitamins uh, above levels that you may be able to obtain uh, in your diet. So really you need to separate the B vitamin effects um, to nutritional effects, which um, are those effects that are related to the amount that you can get in your diet, and actually pharmacological effects that are uh, almost drug-like effects that um, come from taking super physiological amounts of B vitamins and certainly there is evidence that there are beneficial effects of taking um, B vitamin supplements for example uh, homocysteine levels can be decreased by taking um, supplements of uh, certain B vitamins including vitamin B6 uh, folate uh, and vitamin B12 um, diet can also decrease folate uh, decrease homocysteine levels but it's not as effective as uh, taking the supplements now that's not to say that if you had a healthy diet that the homocysteine levels wouldn't eventually fall back to normal levels it's, and the supplements are simply maybe acting uh, in, in a kind of a, a, a quicker way um, but generally um, I would always suggest taking a multivitamin I believe that multivitamins uh, provide uh, good good insurance against um, uh, detrimental health outcomes and since most uh, multivitamins contain B, B vitamins you will usually get enough uh, B vitamins in your diet if you're taking a multivitamin. One thing to say uh, to finish this video off is that some people don't like taking supplements but they may be concerned that they don't get enough B vitamins in their diet uh, and there is actually a third way that you can uh, try and increase the amount of B vitamins that you get in your diet and that is by taking uh, a food supplement. Um, obviously uh, synthetic vitamins in, in pills some people don't like taking them uh, so what you could do is you could actually take something like brewer's yeast or spirulina uh, you could take a food that's rich in in, in certain b vitamins uh, and that would be a way of, uh, of increasing the b vitamins in your diet without actually taking synthetic vitamins uh, in a uh, in a supplement such as a multivitamin uh, some people prefer taking um, vitamins in that way uh, obtaining their their nutrients in that way uh, there are advantages um, to taking, uh, you know, taking your B vitamins, for example, in brewer's yeast. There are other associated nutrients in brewer's, brewer's yeast, um, such as chromium, um, and, and and possibly uh, in nutrients that we really, we, you know, we don't really understand, what, what, you know, what the health effects are. But certainly, brewer's yeast will supply uh, B vitamins in a, in a kind of a natural food form. Uh, and brewer's yeast is a food, so you're not really uh, taking a supplement. You're just uh, eating uh, another food that is is rich in in B vitamins. So that's one option. Um, spirulina again has a, a range of vitamins in, including certain uh, B vitamins, um, and uh, you know, so so those types 
types of superfoods are you know worth considering if you don't want to take a synthetic uh, multivitamin evidence uh, that um, synthetic vitamins are uh, not as good as food um, uh, food vitamins that's contentious um, I I you know personally don't feel that synthetic vitamins are detrimental as long as you know which type you're taking and you know what you're doing um, there are forms of synthetic vitamins that are perhaps not as uh, as well absorbed or as well utilized as uh, vitamins that are present for example in plants or other uh, you know natural compounds however um, on the whole taking a, a b vitamin in a multivitamin a b complex in a multivitamin uh, i don't really see any difference between that uh, and taking uh, you know getting the b vitamins from your food or from um, uh, from brewery, brewer's yeast b vitamins are very well absorbed uh, they're water soluble so they tend not to be toxic um, and uh, you know how much you take is is again contentious but most multivitamins will have more b vitamins than you will require uh, and you will excrete a lot of the, uh, the vitamin without utilizing it uh, which you could say is a waste um, does it have any detrimental effects uh, I haven't seen any evidence of that uh, in studies as long as you don't take uh, very very high concentrations uh, they're usually very safe so there's three options you can look at foods that can take B contain B vitamins in your diet you could take a multivitamin or a B complex or you could look at superfood like um, the spirulina or, or brewer's yeast but what things for sure if you can increase or if you can let's say optimize the B vitamins in your diet certainly that's not going to have a, a detrimental effects and there is the, 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 the you know the, the benefit that it could actually uh, improve your mood if you have a, a B vitamin deficiency if you don't have a B vitamin deficiency if you've already got optimal levels in your diet B vitamins are very unlikely to make any more benefit um, to your mood so what we're really talking about is those people that have a deficiency and of course remember some people have much higher requirements of B vitamins than others so just because one person can get the B vitamins they require from their diet doesn't mean that everybody can some people have very very high requirements for certain vitamins um, due to you know metabolic uh, and genetic differences that we all have uh, within our cells so I hope you found that interesting as always Eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video. Take care.